Father, I thank you and praise you for this time, for this wonderful opportunity that you have given us to do the new interview in the new year with the, your beloved servant of God who has received your call, left the home, left the city, left the state and came down to the entire new places and reached hundreds of people and now Lord, they are in your kingdom. Father, I pray that this interview will be a great encouragement to many unrich people groups, to many pastors, to many missionaries, to many young people who would like to go to different part of the country and to serve the kingdom of God. Father, you bless us as we take the interview that every word that we speak will be anointed and it will be encouraged and it will be go deep down to the root of the believers and to the servant. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hello everyone. Welcome to this one to one interview. Today we have a very special guest in our show. The most reverend and senior most pastor Purushottam Choudhury and we will ask him that what really motivated him how did he receive the call of God and what was the vision of God that he has seen and what motivated him to leave Tamil Nadu and come to Andhra Pradesh to an interior village and do the ministry of God sir welcome to this one to one to one interview nice to meet you brother i am very very happy to have be with you it's my privilege to have such a question and giving answer to me also. This is uh, our new. This is a new year. The viewers of Global TV Live is watching, and I'm so much encouraged that we could able to do the interview with one of the honest and ground rooted person who has changed many of the life of the people. So, Lord, for the viewers of Global TV Live 24/7, can I have a brief introduction? Your name, your father name, and where you belong. And how did you come to this particular place where you are right now working for the Lord? Okay, my name is Pastor Purushottam Chaudhary. I am born and brought in Chennai. My father's name is Pastor Vyan Mokshanandam. He belongs to Chennai also. Actually, our forefather belongs to Andhra Pradesh. My grandfather, he went to the Chennai and settled for his life and some purposes. After that, my dad also born there only. So we became a, like a Tamilians. In the year of 1982, at the time, my mother became Christians because of some reason. At the time, my father going to the some cine field to work and uh, he have some bad act activities like a drunken, such a thing. We went under the very, very poor situation. We don't have eat some food also at the time. We don't have the such uh, cloths also. In the year of um, 80, from 80 to 90, we don't have the happiness in our home. We have such a problems. I didn't see the hell, but I saw the hell in our experience, in our family. Because of my father activities, he didn't give first priority to us and our family and my mother also. And at that time, I have two sisters. We went very lot of the problems. At the time, my grandfather who went some labors and bring the foods to feed us. And on that situation, my mother went to the church. She, she accepted Christ as a personal savior in the year of 1982. From that onwards, my mother continually goes to the church. The reason is, my father must change. This is her motive. This is her goal to go church. After 10 years, in the year of the 1993, he became Christians by the miraculous work. One day, I still remember in 1993, January 31st, my mother went to the church at the time all night prayer is going there. So all the family members coming in front of the pulpit, they are sharing their testimony, what was did in their future life, past and life at that year. They are sharing everybody and happily they are spending their time. So at that time, my mother was thinking herself, everybody are sharing, sharing testimony, but I don't have any testimony to say. Why? Because my husband is not coming, my children is not coming. I am alone today. I am here. She was thinking in her heart and praying in, in her heart like this. Father, 
next year next december 31st we must be here me and my father me and my husband all our family will be here you must have mercy on us and touch my husband life if she will not change please give some hill in his body she prayed like that unfortunately god heard her, her prayer on the next year the december came at the time he had the fistula in his back side mm -hmm. the fistula is growing because of fistula he getting pain and more and more because of pain he was crying he was calling my mother to pray for her him and also he telling to him please bring some pastors to pray for him see sometime when the pastor comes to visit our mother my father sometime beated pastor also he hold them hold and he pug uh, he catch them and fucking fucking them like that mm -hmm. but now this is the first time he says please call the pastor to pray for me mm -hmm. if god heal me this week we will go to the church mm -hmm. at the time one pastor came and pray for him and uh, one doctor came he had some surgery also in my home mm -hmm. after surgery finishing something he was crying he was repenting himself without any message mm -hmm. without any gospel hearing then he called his parents he bowed down in front of them and asking forgiveness and also asking forgiveness to his wife also and also he called us he gave the kisses up for us also so i thought something changing in his life and we saw the heavenly joy at that time in our home Uh, uh, you know that date is exactly december 31st afternoon it's happening and evening thing my my dad also telling to my mother we will, we will have the fellowship with the church we will go that is the first time in our life we went to the church with family that time my mother opened her house last year i thought in my heart god please mercy on us if you do some miracles we will come next year if not please give one hill into my husband body through that he will change because of her prayer the illness came he became completely like a child and he came to church and cried he repented in front of the church in front of the people he totally totally completely changed at that year after that one pastor came from vijayawada to my home his name is pastor bhagavan das now he is still living in ongol he is the pastor leader in the ipc church through him he went to the bible college in vijayawada gonadala the principal name is pastor noel samuel by him he joined there after some days people heard his testimony the holy spirit inspired many pastor to invite him to have testimonies throughout the andhra pradesh Amen. he is the well known speaker in the year of 1996 in 1994 he graduated from that bible college and pastor noel samuel garu and his mother they have some gathering discussing about how some new project some villages at the time they have the project in the place of surampalam to have 20 poor children to feed them and sending them schools as a home so they gave that project to my father because of them he came to the surampalam we don't have any relationship here because of the ipc leader pastor noel samuel garu he sent him to the surampalam and after he came to the surampalam in the in the year of 95 july 1st he came here so he started his work in july 1st i am also came to visit him after i went to the chennai i brought all my family to him to here then we came all uh, in the 90 uh, 1995 july second week my mother my two sister they also came here and they settled here from that onwards we belongs to this place but for me 
After four months in 1995, they have little church community, the gathering, little church community, I think 10 to 30 people they are gathering every Sunday. After that, they, they, they came to has the lease this place and they started to build small hut. The hut dimension is to the 20 into 40. So they started in the, in the front of my home, they started a small church. And uh, while the work is going, at the time I came, I saw all the work. At the time, the Holy Spirit, something happening in my heart, inspiring. I also saw in my father's life who changed completely. Then I was inspiring. I saw something heavenly joy in my family. I never saw in my experience before past tense. But this is new experience through that my dad life. My life also changing. It's a like a illuminating. So through my father's life, I was so influenced. I came to Christ because my father changed completely. His changing life made me to bring Christ without gospel. Wow. A wonderful testimony but I would like to ask you one thing here and uh, to make sure the viewers also uh, know these things very important see right now many people from the Christians field they are trying to be they're trying to go into the full ministry yes and uh, you they might have their own opinions but full industry to gospel industry or to the kingdom of God like your father took the decision through him you came to the gospel, you came to the kingdom of God, that's okay. But why you took the decision to come to this small village called Chandu, Chandubanda. Chandubanda and not some other city? You could have chosen Vijayawada, maybe um, uh, Chennai or anything because Tamil Nadu was the base for the yeah. booming industry, for yes. the film industry, yes. for educational, everything. for sports, yes. for total changes. But what made you that you being a young man, mm. you forget your dreams. Yes. You could be able to build your church in Vishakapatnam or Vijayawada or anywhere. Yes. That's a different thing. Okay. But leaving those comfort zone, mm. what made you to come to this village, which is very difficult even till today to get yes. a bus service 24 into 7. Yes. But what made you during that time to come and stay here? Yes. And what love motivated you to serve the people of Chandubanda and okay. the Vijayawada yes. Andhra Pradesh? Nice, wonderful question. See, this is the answer for me to say you. In the year of 1997, I went to the CWTR. I have the great zeal to become big pastor. At the time, I studied many of the biographies, but one of the biographies inspired me to become great pastor. His name is the Paul Engichu. When I reached Bible college, I spent many times in the library to study many, many servants of God, like a Billy Graham, Paul Engicho. So especially Paul Engicho lifestyle inspired me to become one of the pastor. At the time, I, I took decision in my heart, I want to become pastor. But my vision is big, dream is big, but my ministry, my location is very small. Yeah. So I thought to go some city or North India to do ministry there. Then I went to the North India to do ministry by OM. OM, you know, Operation Mobilization. Yeah. It's like a tax distribution. I went there, I spent some, some, some months also there in North India. At the time, while I was cooking in my room at the day i got the duty to cooking i'm alone in my room i was studying the life of the jacob suddenly through the scripture i heard the voice the bible says you rise and go to your own place where your mom and dad there god said to the jacob that passage was studying but for me it was a life-giving spirit was speaking to me i understood god is speaking to me 
and that onwards i took decision to go to my own place from here i want to come here but they don't give the permission to me at that time i got so sick i became very dangerous and i went to the hospital admitted after discharge then given for permission to come here and when i reached this place my father was struggling to do ministry alone then i joined with him i started my ministry after that i i was getting more zeal and zeal to see the great church in this place but i am doing ministry under my father so i can't do anything after my father went to the lord i got the freedom i got the freedom what i want to do everything now i am clear in vision to do mega church in this place why because there are many mega churches only in city not in the village okay but my zeal is god can do in every place not only city he can do in village also i want to show the god's power and miracle through the world by building the mega church in this world the my next target is 3000 souls i am waiting for that praise god and this is very difficult thing for man to see the vision because in a village mega church looks like impossible yes but um, you have taken a big uh, accepted the big calling big yes. vision it is yes. truly only god knows and you know that it is possible by god impossible by man that mega church in the villages i think it is going to become a breakthrough yes, if that happens yes so another question to you is that sir when i just came and saw your house you still live just in a small hut yes. but you have a big mega church dream yes do you regret sometimes i could have been a pastor in a city so that i could have a big house like other pastors your children could have gone to big colleges or big yeah. school do you regret why do you just dream about church church belongs to the believers yes. church belongs to the people mm. but what for you why you are still living in a small hut and what motivated you or are you really demotivated to see what's happening with you the thing is the paul said the book of second corinthian 4 verse 16 he says please see the things which is invisible not visible i learn from that script scripture visible is not eternal invisible is the eternal mm. so my home is very small i never regret about that home why because that is visible <laughs> that is not eternal and also uh, moses said your god is the eternal the uh, inhabitation so god is my inhabitation i learn so god is my home god is my inhabitation i am living in him paul said without we are knowing living in god already i am living inside of god god is living in me i am living inside of god but why i am giving more priority to the church church is belongs to body of christ so jesus paid all his blood his body when we work with him the church must grow church is not belongs to human being pastors it belongs to jesus only church is the kingdom of god church is the body of christ church is the temple of god whenever we work for church god will work for us that's why in my life in my goal in my target we must work for church edification that is my target so one thing here i would like to once again ask and wanted to make sure that the viewers of global tv live understand very clearly what exactly happening in your home that the call of god the vision of god is carrying out by father to son then son to the uh, your son yes like what's happening when the people when the young people are no more interested to mm. serve the ministry to mm. be in the ministry mm. they would like to deviate their calling okay. maybe to other field which is mm. not so bad it depend on the individual yes. but when come to your family what's mm. happening here that all you would like to serve the lord by staying in a small hut mm. that doesn't make you bother either yes. you should bother your son your daughter your yes. wife somebody or the others would have should be complaining you because mm. doing ministry is very difficult is when other ministers are being served in a very wonderful way international pastors national yeah. level pastors <coughs> yeah. but staying in a small village you have a big dream 
where your believers are not capable enough to give sufficient offering yes. to build a mega yes. church mega church in the sense huge gathering where they can sit here mm. how is it possible and how the vision is passing from one generation to another generation what's happening in your home by the holy spirit only i can say why because in the presence of holy spirit everybody will obey see in the life of my father because of the holy spirit by obedience he came here when i am watching at him i saw many things changed his life because of that only i came to christ i told you yeah i didn't hear any gospel but the life of changing i saw in my father that made me change same thing when the holy spirit works in home in my life automatically my children will follow me you see then the family of noah god spoke to noah but all the team work will done because of god's presence i always ask to the lord lord be with us in my home in my heart in my children his presence only make obedience that's all and one thing i would like to clear to the viewers also children of pastor doesn't make doesn't mean that only the biological children the member of the church today many of them are been serving the lord as a missionary in different part of the india my question to you is sir how do you feel when you see your believers whom you call as your children not your bio biological children but your theological yes. children or church uh, children now they are serving as a missionary in different part of the country yes. when they did not when you came first and you were seeing these young people wandering here and there coming to your house doing studies helping you right now they are serving in different part of the uh, world of different part of the countries and they are some of them are serving in cities mm. pastor is staying in the village but your uh, students your children are serving in the cities how proud do you feel when your believers are right now working as a minister of god i am feel very proud why because jesus never went to the all the country he he was spend all the time only israel but his disciple went to all the all around the world same as a leader never will feel bad about their disciples but i want to share some things to the disciple disciple must be wherever they will do the work but they must be always think about jesus his ministry through life through their life jesus must be only glorified one thing uh, i would like to ask you and uh, i think this church will be different than other churches because we have been saying when the churches are only concentrating on the believers mm. you hundred uh, uh, many years back mm. the matthew chapter 28 the great commission mm. go and make disciple mm. you still stick down to that way that that particular topic mm. making disciple yeah like how did you stick on to that particular area to make disciple to train the children to mm. train the youth actually how did you got the training do you still uh, focusing on the disciple making process in the church mm. what do you would like to say about disciple making process yeah what i am saying that the pastor must be stay with their believers he is the shepherd okay. the duty of the shepherd not simply going here and spending time outside he must spend his time with the sheep sheep always waiting for food so pastor must be show the food for their sheep recently i following one bishop his name is bishop odiyapu he said once he belongs to the nigerian pastor one of the greatest pastor in this world he said inside of church we must every day preach the word every day not only sunday why because believers are symbolizing the sheep sheep always coming to the food to have so as a pastor we must provide scripture every day without any season every day his words inspire me that's why every day every day i preach i teach to my believers not only 100 people if one believer will come i preach to him like a one lakh people so i will do sincerely teaching 
preaching the believers i never go whatever i preach to them whatever i motivate to them they will go outside they will do the same thing what i did in front of them that's all so another thing that uh, it is a very important thing you have said one believers you look like them as a one lakh people yes. it's a great great information yes yeah, i think it is a big thing that you are yes. encouraging the pastors or yes. the leaders yes. and the uh, second thing i would like to one second ask you is that your vision that uh, big congregations gathering that uh, right now you need the extension of your building yes. as we call as a mega <coughs> yes. church how the believers or how the uh, viewers of global tv or the believers the pastors the leaders who are watching us right now mm. how can they pray for you and pray for the church pray for the ministry that you are doing mm. that uh, your vision not mm. your vision god's vision, god's vision. Yes. can be yes. able to uh, see into practically mm. and uh, because an ordinary man seeing an extraordinary mm. vision yes. so how do you see that what kind of prayer you needed so that the god vision can mm. seen practically mm. in the coming years see i need your prayers to fulfill all this vision this vision is not belongs to me this vision is to belongs to jesus why because jesus is the only one man in this world he lived as a visionary he gave that vision to the church i am the part of the church he is the unlimited his body also unlimited i am the part of his body so i understood who i am in christ this is the most powerful word i why i am saying every pastor every believer must know who they are in christ i understood who i am that's why my thinking my vision everything became unlimited so i am asking all the audience please pray for this unlimited visions to be completed coming year nowadays i am thinking about 3000 souls in our village we don't have that much people also i think 25 i mean 200 2500 people are living only in my village but by the holy spirit he will bring the people to our church that is my faith so please pray for 3000 souls and also i am expecting a new place like a five acres to build one auditorium for worship center so please pray for the two things one is 3000 souls second is to build big auditorium mega church in this village location this is my two prayer request that's all and how happy you are doing the ministry are you really happy doing the ministry i am God? so happy why because i understood what i am doing to whom i am doing i know what i am going to get in the future i am so happy and one thing also i would like to just uh, ask you that how exactly when you change the life of the people change mm. the life of a young person they change completely socially educationally economically hmm. actually what transaction happened to them we see that in your church member that when they come from different area it took times that yes. but the role of a pastor when they reach to the people when they reach out to the unreach people groups hmm. their educationally they are changed yes uh, spiritually they are changed how do you see those changes what happens actually and how they become changes now you uh though you are a pastor mm. but we can uh, we can see that you being taking care taken care of a great uh, holistic development in the entire districts mm. holistic development in the sense educational develop yes. the believers are socially they are developed yes. the lifestyle has changed yes. uh, and um, though there is no rehabilitation center here yes. but your work is trying to work like rehabilitations i mean yes. like people the drunkards are trying to leave yes. the, the, yes. the drinking habits and all actually how is it possible many people ask the mm. question to me how is it possible that a drunkard can leave drinking yes. without any medicines is yes. it true or yes, it's true or can you just tell to our viewers it's possible see, how it is possible if somebody want to leave the drinking habit see changing will not come outside changing comes always inside from us only for example the samaritan woman she was changed how by jesus word 
he said in telugu amma it means mother only one word he said that one word changed her life see jesus had the positive mentality this is the sinful world but when he was inside this world he lived as a holy how it's possible by thinking positively holily what i am saying as a pastor through my thoughts through my words only people will change if i communicate with them positive mentality the negative people sinner will be changed why because when i am positive i will communicate with them positive okay when i am negative i am communicate with them with negative so changing will not come from their life without my permission without my thinking if my thinking change i am saying the world will change changing starting here only through thinking through thinking through word that's why i always say think positively think like jesus speak like jesus speak like positively changing will not come from chin sinner's heart changing will come through leader's word through leader's mindset if i think you are bad and i will communicate with you bad then you you are not bad man but when i am communicating with you bad you will be become bad so which word of god uh, always encourage you to go ahead and yes. um, oh, can you just tell our viewers the word of god that encourages you speaks to you very close to your heart very close to your ears yes. very close to your eyes that motivated you to speak every single day to the people of god to the believers even one person that you see them as a one lakh unreached people who yes. are going to yes. receive the gospel yes. from them yes. so can you share the word of god that is very close to your heart yes. to the viewers of global tv live 247 and they can able to one thing if you definitely really wanted to see the changes in your life because many of them don't believe they go to the churches they go to various hospital to see lot of changes to stop habits but 2024 a new year yes. new resolutions new concept new thought process and if you wanted to see a changes in your life you can contact pastor we will be having the phone number in the descriptions for any time for the prayer and we believe that we have seen so many people life has changed your life also can be changed so finally which word of god you would like to share with our viewers and which is very close to your heart that give you punch you give you motivating every single day see there is the only one word i always thinking about jesus told me i will not leave you orphan i will send you comforter he will be with you he will be in you when he will come upon you you will receive the power comforter who is the holy spirit he came from jesus to be with us to be in us to give power when he comes upon us through the holy spirit only i am doing this ministry without holy spirit i am nothing he is my friend he is my teacher he is my guider he is my everything that's all thank you so much sir for this one to one interview dear viewers if you really like to know more about pastor and his activity his work what motive what motivate him and if you like to change like him then please do comment us and ask us the real questions and if we have forgot to ask any questions we will definitely catch up with the second episode to make sure to ask the same questions i hope this new year will be a great year and your life will be changed and you will be a agent of change in the coming days just like pastor have said that matthew chapter 6 verse 33 for seek the kingdom of god and yes. all the things shall be added unto you so the kingdom of god and his righteousness if we give the first priority all the things will be added unto us unto our family into our community sir i am talking with you Me hope also. that many believers will be touched by this yes. interview thank you sir thank you so much god bless you may the lord increase your work also god thank bless you, you. bye bye